What's up, guys? It's Professor Gnome, and we're back looking at Gouging Fire EX. Um, I like this card a lot, and I'm really excited to show off a little bit of a variance I've done for this card. Um, one of the issues I was having a lot with this deck is that just beating Charizard EX was a little bit awkward, since you only hit for 160, and if you have the maximum belt, then you can do enough to KO it, but... Um, like without it you're kind of stuck and so one of the things that i've seen a lot of people using is iron valiant in order to move that around and drop the 20 damage counters and kind of shore up the rest of that but another thing that i've been doing is i've been using rapidash and its heat boost ability and what this is is that if we discard one fire energy from our hand we can do 30 more damage so we pretty much have the ability to one shot charizards at all times as long as we have rapidash on the field um, it allows our Entei single, like our normal Entei V to be much stronger and we get the draw engine from it. Um, it really just powers up our whole deck a lot. And I actually think this is a really good card that I don't see anybody really running in this deck. Um, it takes a little bit longer to set it up obviously than, you know, your other options that you can just nest ball right out. But I think it is a really strong option. We run Earth and Vessel in order to make sure that not only are we getting our cards, uh, our energy into our hand, to be able to utilize it but also um it helps speed up stuff to get it into the the discard pile and really what we want is as many energies in the discard pile as possible in the later stages of the game we can use magma basin we can use professor sada and um those two combinations together can power up our gouging fire hit for 260 at all times at bare minimum uh and we're in a really great spot then what we want to do is make sure that we're using our switch carts and our normal switches in order to just kind of manipulate the battlefield as much as we want. Uh, we're also able to run the seal stone because of the NTV that we have in the deck. Uh, and like I said, we're also running maximum belt just to make it much easier to KO all the larger targets in the game. Things that we can't get past. Um, one of the things that we actually ran into before but that aren't really an issue is rogue um, incineroar variants. We wouldn't do enough damage to KO them, and then if they have the um, fish, what is the fish called? Uh, Relicanth. It, when they when they have the Relicanth out, then they just one-shot us back, because our health total isn't super high. Um, you could run things like Bravery Charm to kind of fix that, but I don't feel like it fixes it enough to matter. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend Bravery Charm all that much. But yeah, that's the deck, guys. Um, this is pretty much the build that I've been working with that's gone really well for me. But definitely let me know any changes that you would make to the list or uh, how you would play it. Um, I really like Rapidash, but I know there's a lot of different people who are playing uh, things like uh, Moltres. And then you could also run Radiant Charizard instead of Radiant Greninja. I prefer Radiant Greninja just because it helps speed up the deck a little bit. But with the trekking shoes and everything else all together, you don't really need it as much. I just kind of prefer it. Uh, but you could absolutely run Charizard as well as another backup attacker and use it even as a single prize attacker. Um, I also run Rapidash in this deck because it helps you get around uh, rogue Mimikyus and things like that um, as well that can be pretty annoying. So, yeah, that's the list, guys. Definitely let me know what you think. Let me know how you guys are running the deck. And definitely let me know what you want to see next on the channel, uh, what cards featured in decks and things like that. And, yeah, we'll get into the game in a second. I'll see you guys there. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff um, and all that. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in game one. Peace. All right, we're into game one. I was uh, a little late on starting the recording. <laughs> so our opponent's going first. Um... They're playing what appears to be Future Hands. Um, we opened okay. There was no Bulligans or anything like that. Uh, you know, so don't worry about any of that. Um, they do a pretty underwhelming turn. Going first for them isn't really ideal. What we can do is we can Concealed Cards real quick. See what we get. We'll discard one Fire Energy. That'll activate our Sada. Okay, uh, we will Fleet Footed, get one more card. We have the Arvin, so we have the option real quick of we can Seal Stone to get something else, but what we'll probably go ahead and do is just kind of take our time. We can Arvin here, 
we already have the switches in hand so what we can do is we'll just nest ball and grab the future booster yeah so we'll grab the future booster and the nest ball we can nest ball ourselves out our gouging fire that'll activate our sada for next turn then what we can do is place the future booster we can place the seal stone we will manually attach one energy onto gouging fire and we'll end our turn since at this point it doesn't look like it's likely that they'll be able to um, knock us out or bring in uh, iron hands that's a little unfortunate what we wanted to use was the jet energy bring that into the active use sada get this powered up and start taking knockouts um, but we're going to be able to do pretty much the exact same thing where we'll, we'll place magma basin down um, and get things going that way. What would actually be nice, um, well, we can probably do, thanks to the town store, actually, that's pretty cool for us as well. Um, allow us to thin our deck slightly. We can use the lost vacuum to remove this um the uh heavy baton and that's actually pretty huge for us getting rid of the heavy baton kind of uh like kind of matters a lot especially since we're gonna bump the town store it makes it so when we knock this out they don't have the next one accelerated and that really hinders this deck a lot like it really slows it down uh we'll place ponyta down we'll go ahead and town store to pull the max bell out so now we have that not that it's going to matter dramatically uh in this case but it will matter a little bit what we can do now is we'll magma basin to get rid of that we can activate the magma basin put the energy onto our gouging fire we can use our fleet footed perfect now we can Greninja, double Sada. So what we're really looking for is we're hopefully we can find a switch card. So that way we can use our seal stone and pull the iron hands up to the active and knock it out. Uh, a jet energy is fine. We can use that. Oh, that's my phone going off. Sorry about that. Thought it was muted. Uh, we don't need that. So we can get rid of that. That's There's a switch cart. Still not exactly what we're looking for. Um, which is a little sad. Hmm. What do we want to do? Alright, so we'll, we'll jet energy bring this up to the active. We'll hold off on the Sadas for now. I think what we just want to make sure we do is that we lost Vacuum. We can get rid of one of the Vitalities. And use that to get rid of this. Um, yeah. So now what we can do is we'll Star Alchemy. Grab our boss's orders. boss's orders pull this up to the front hit over 260 take the knockout remove the energies from play um force it so what they're gonna have to do okay yeah so they would have had to bring in maridon uh repower back up and that was pretty much going to be the end of it that's so one of the combos that's super important and why i recommend everyone um play the uh vacuum is specifically for moments like that being able to remove the heavy baton really kind of cripples uh future hands and so if you're not equipped for it they they would have just built into another um you know they would have just built right into another iron hands and just kind of continued their game plan um 
But when you're able to stop them like that, that it like extremely hinders them, slows down the entire rest of their game. Uh, so that's why Lost Vacuum, very important to run right now. Um, even though I see a good amount of people still cutting it. Um, also, I think that showed Gouging Fire, how fast it can just be powered up and like how strong it is. Um, but yeah, that was game one, guys. We'll go in a little bit quick, so we'll go into game two right away. I'll see you guys there. Peace. All right, we're into game two. Our opponent won the coin flip and has decided to go first. We're going to mulligan this hand away. Only one mulligan, so that's pretty good. Uh, Gouging Fire, Sada, Ultra Ball. Not bad. I would have liked another basic uh, to have down. But we can always Ultra Ball... What was that? Oh, Iron Bundle. That's cool art. I feel like I've never seen that one before. Is this like a promo or something? Yeah, it is. Is that a promo in? It's really cool. I like that. Uh... There's the Artisan, that's nice. I mean, it doesn't do a ton for us. Um, but what it will allow me to do is get my Ponyta on play to make... Um, to make getting into... Uh, Rapidash easier. Pretty uneventful turn by them. Switch cards, nice. We will Artisan first... Just to get the deck thinned by a single card, but also reshuffled. Then what we can do is Tracking Shoe. We don't need that. Another Switch. We can get rid of this. Uh, really, we'll just get rid of du Double Energy. We could go Greninja here. But I think going Iron Valiant is better. Because what we can do is we can go Vitality here. Draw three. Sad we only got this now, but that's fine. Um, we can manually attach here. We can go Iron Valiant. Drop the 20 damage. Switch back out. Go into this. Attack for 60. This is a situation where Moltres would have been better because we wouldn't have had to use all the switch cards. Um, but if you're running Moltres, you wouldn't be run, running Iron Valiant. So then, you know, that is what it is. But you guys get the point. Colorist Experiment. Let's see what they get rid of. Um, one Roxanne, one Sableye. Hmm. I guess in theory, it could have been nice to hold on to the Sada for next turn. Um, when I had used... Um, what's it called? When I had used the tracking shoe earlier, I, I could have held on to the other vitality. Um, and I guess, I guess that's a mistake. I could have held on to that. But it's only a mistake in hindsight, because we didn't know what we were going to draw. And so, like, now we're, nef we're left with no draw options. But, again, like, we only know that now. Water energy. Hmm. The question is, hypothetically, if I draw into an energy card, and I can just one-shot anything, do I boss his orders something to, into the active? Hmm. There's Magma Basin. So that's pretty much the same thing. So I can instantly one-shot something. Should I get rid of the Greninja to like get rid of draw options? 
should I get rid of Um, should I get rid of the Cramorant, because that can attack me, and, like, actually do a lot of damage? I feel like that might be better. So we'll put this into the active, because the issue now is that they have enough cards that this can just come right in and knock me out. Um, and I really don't want that to happen is where it's going to take them a couple more resources in order to get the Greninja to work. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of the Cramorant and see what happens. Uh, not exactly sure what the best option there is. Okay. So what I'm going to do... Now that I got the vitality, is that I'll retreat this. I'll retreat the Gouging Fire, put two energies into the discard pile, put Iron Valiant into the active, then use vitality. Yeah. So I can put vitality back on. And depending on what he puts into the active, I can either choose to just equip both uh, energies with vitality, or I can equip one. Um, ignore the other, use Magma Basin, put the third energy on, switch cart back in, and then I'll be repowered up with, uh, Blaze Blitz to knock out whatever comes in if I have to. Preferably Iron Hands would be in the active, but that I, I don't see that happening. If it's only something like Comfey in the active, then in theory I could just drop the drop the bits onto that and then attack with uh, Heat Blast and try to make that work as well. In theory, I also could have grabbed Greninja at the start of the game instead of the Iron Valiant and tried to plus up cards there, but I still don't think that was a mistake. That's only a mistake from, like, this specific point in the game, where, like, I could have drawn more cards, but it didn't really matter. Losing the Magma Basin is a little annoying, because it messes with this plan. I don't completely need it for this to work. Probably going to put uh, Cramorant back. Yeah, Cramorant and one energy. I wonder what they're running that they need the dark energy as well. Alright, well, that's awesome. So, now I don't even need the switch cart. So we'll do the same play. We can retreat both, bring this into the active, or, well, I will need the switch card, actually, but. Um, we'll go Vitality. I'm going to place one here and one here. Draw three. We can evolve here. We'll hold on to the Magma Basin for now. We will switch cart. Bring this in, attack for 60, take the knockout on Comfey, there's the seal stone that do doesn't really help us, hmm. There's Colrus. So we're in a position now that's a little awkward. Because if this were to get knocked out here. Um, which I don't think can really happen.
It does 180. So no. So we're pretty much fine. I don't think there's anything on the board that can actually knock us out. Uh, Lost Mine could be annoying. Take a knockout on Rapidash. Because he is it. Yeah. Is it enough cards that, like, he can take a knockout on Rapidash and, like, that's slightly annoying? Sad, we didn't actually get to show off Rapidash in this game. <laughs> Um, cool. So, we got the other fire energy. I actually kind of want to just hold on to it now, though. We'll just go for a regular heat blast here. And the reason for that is that, yes, I can attach it and just go for the heat blast. Uh, or the blaze blitz or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. It's not going to make a difference. As where what I can do on my next turn um, is I'll survive whatever this hit is, right? So it doesn't, like, really matter. Let's see what they choose to do. Okay, this could be slightly annoying. Because we're not going to have the damage to knock them out back. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that makes that easier. Well, Nest Ball... Oh, our Entei's prize, right. Forgot about that. Uh, what are we going to do here, then? Alright, we'll go Greninja. We will... Concealed cards. If our Entei wasn't prized, we'd be in a... We'd be in a much better spot, but unfortunately it is. Uh, we'll lay down the Magma Basin for now. We'll Nest Ball out another Iron Valiant. At this point, it's going to be a little too late to get Ponyta up. And also, we don't really need it in this matchup specifically. Um, then what we can do is we'll just Iono the rest of this away. Cool. So, all this kind of works for me. What we'll do is we can go ahead and... Jet energy this up to the active. And just go ahead and take the knockout here. Take one prize. There's a switch cart. Iron Hands is going to come in. That's fine by us. Since we'll be able to knock it out pretty much no matter what. Um... If this comes in, if they choose to keep this in and it knocks this out, they take three prizes. We bring Iron Valiant EX into the active. We can Magma Basin, put the 20 damage down on uh, Gouging Fire. Then we can Earthen Vessel away the Ultra Ball, get the last two energies, bring it into the active, and just go for the KO. If they want it to be really annoying, what they'd probably want to do is bring Sableye in, use Sableye to take the knockout on this Gouging Fire, and put enough damage onto this one. That then they could allow Sableye to get knocked out on the following turn. Then bring in Iron Hands. And then I'd be pretty much screwed. But they're going to make the mistake of looking for like three three prize cards right there. Um, they won't exactly know what's in my hand. So they can't know that that's not the best play to make. But I feel like just personally, no matter what, you would want to make sure that you're going for the um you'd want to make sure you were going for the sableye play i feel like the sableye play is just objectively better and um in like every possible outcome so we'll grab these two 
place the energy down. I feel like our opponent made some mistakes here and we didn't draw um, as optimally as we potentially could have. But we'll go ahead and just switch. I know we can just free retreat anyway, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll just go ahead and place Blitz, get the knockout. That's another two easy prize cards. Bop and bop. And we'll grab the Entei we wish we had earlier. <laughs> Um, I saw that we didn't have it before, and I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's game two, guys. Uh, our opponent definitely made a mistake with not using the Sableye there, though we definitely could have pivoted around. They don't know if we have another boss option um, or whatever, but it definitely their better play was to make that Sableye move. Um, it could have either won them the game or got them more turns. But yeah, we're, we were able to make it work. Uh, our draws weren't optimal, and our play in that game, much like our opponent, maybe wasn't as good as it could have been. Um, there's definitely, I'd have to re-watch it to see like different choices I could have made. Uh, but obviously that's all better in hindsight, right? Uh, but yeah, that's game two, guys. Unfortunately, we didn't get to show off Ponyta in game two, but we'll look for it in game three. Hopefully we have a matchup that it's actually relevant in. Uh, and I'll see you guys in game three. Peace out. See you there. All right, we're into game three. Uh, we actually won the coin flip this time, but we're choosing for our opponent to go first. Uh, I kind of prefer that um, personally. We'll just lay one Gouging Fire into the active for now. We'll see. We have access to uh, Professor's Vitality. Our opponent is playing Roaring Moon or Ancient Box. Which is actually kind of fine for us. We we don't have a high enough health total that knocking them out, uh, like, or surviving their knockouts is super easy. But we also never really have an issue KOing them, at least, you know, most of the time. There's the switch cart. We can go ahead and we'll nest ball. In a situation like this, I'm going to nest ball for Greninja. We can go ahead and Earth and Vessel away the switch cart for now. Grab ourselves double energy. Use Greninja. Concealed cards. Get ourselves some other stuff, though in fairness none of this really matters all too much. We can Vitality here. Attach one energy, get ourselves some more cards. That's kind of nice. Um, let's see. We can go ahead and grab ourselves the Iron Valiant here. Let's see if we have anything super important prize. Not really. We can go ahead and place this down. Go ahead and attach this for now. Um... And then from here, we're just going to go ahead and manually attach. Uh, we'll attach for 60. Just to lay some damage down. We're not really in a position that they can do much back to us. And they don't have any... Yeah, they only have one energy in the discard pile anyway. Um, the Explorer's Guidance is going to help them here a bit. They did lose out on... One Roaring Moony X and a Poke Stop. So if we can replace the Poke Stop, that'd be pretty cool for us. We're not going to take too much damage on the next attack, uh, though it will be a two-hit KO, uh, or at least prime them for a two-hit KO. We have the energy if we need. But we'll see what happens. There's an Ultra Ball. They go for Greninja. How many energy in their hand do they have? Jeez. Because they already discarded two. Yeah, there's six energy in discard already. Wow, what a hand. I mean, they're out of cards, though. I mean, the easiest play here is we just attach this. We go boss's orders, pull this to the active, 
Um, we lay down Gouging Fire for the next turn. We can go ahead and spin Pokestop just to see what we get. We get a switch. And we just attack for 260. Get the knockout. And claim two prizes. Cool. We got the Magnum Basin and the Research. That's pretty hype. Uh, they're going to come in and be able to knock this out. Uh, our Gouging Fire and the Active is going to get knocked out. Not the biggest deal ever. We just go Iron Valiant and the Active since it has free retreat. Um, we can Magma Basin onto this. And then from there we'll see what we draw off the top deck. Uh, that's fine. They'll get three cards in total. There's a nest ball for the next Roaring Moon, so they'll be able to attach double energy. So not a bad top deck. Actually, maybe the best top deck they possibly could have gotten. <laughs> um, we'll see. We could play down the magma well we're gonna play down the magma basin no matter what we could research and just throw away all the switches which i wouldn't love to do but it may be what we end up needing to do because we'll still have one we should still have yeah like one more switch in deck um and two three more switch cards so it's not that big a deal. We can go Iron Valiant here. Uh, there's a Max Belt. We'll spin the Pokestop just to see if we get anything. Not really. Uh, we can go Entei here, actually. The Entei overall might actually just be slightly better. We can Magma Basin onto it. We can retreat this out. We'll draw a card. Vitality. Uh, Vitality's nice, but not anything great here. What we probably are going to do is get rid of this. We'll get rid of one switch. And find ourselves one more Iron Valiant. Really what we're doing is we're at this point, we're just going to put cards on the board uh, to power up Entei. We'll place this down. Um... We'll hold off on that for now. We'll attack. Clear this off the board. And we'll take one more prize. Tracking shoes is actually pretty good for us because it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of like a free card to get rid of. Um, this will probably get knocked out because they can do 210 at this point. Uh, I'm pretty positive. One, two... Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So yeah, they're able to do enough damage. Um, so they're going to be able to remove this. Uh, kind of annoying that they got rid of the Pokestop, or that they got rid of our Magma Basin already. The Switch Cart doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't love this card in the deck. I get that it's just like a free retreater, and if you have to, you can get it to use it to draw two cards, but I don't think it's super great. Um, they're thinning out their deck a lot more. They're getting themselves another Roaring Moon. Uh, another boss's orders is out of the deck. That's one. Oh, so they didn't have enough damage. I thought I, I guess I counted wrong. I was pretty sure they did, but, um, I guess they did not. So in that case, that's pretty nice for me. I can go ahead and add this to my hand. May as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab this. Then what we'll do is we'll Arvin here. Grab this. And... We can... 
we can have the vacuum just to hold on to it, or we can remove the Pokestop. And I think that's what we're actually going to do. We're going to use this. We'll get rid of the Ultra Ball, since we don't really need that at this point. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the, uh, the Pokestop, just to limit their options. We don't really want them to be able to draw into anything that great at this point. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the Float Stone. Uh, let's Fleet Footed first. Another research. We don't really want that. Uh, we'll Star Alchemy here. There's nothing that we really need with the Star Alchemy, so I'm just thinking we're going to grab ourselves a boss's orders at this point. Um, so there's nothing else we really need, and the boss's orders could be nice. So we'll hold on to that for next turn. And then from here... We're just going to go ahead and Burning Rondo. Knock that out. Put them in a situation where they only have two cards in hand. Uh, Iron Valiant is pretty cool. They only have two cards in hand. They could Vitality and put one energy from, the, uh, from hand down. But I don't really see that being an option. Awakening Drum for three more cards. They're not really in a position to be able to attack us, which is funny because we only have 20 health left. There's the Pokegear, so they'll definitely find something off that. Um, they're still going to need one energy in hand. So they're probably going to put three energy back into the deck. So they'll be at 15 cards. Um, the chances of drawing one are okay. Not incredible because they only put two. Yeah, so they didn't get an energy into hand, so that was going to be the end of the game. Uh, even if they did, we were in a really good position to just kind of close out the game anyway. Uh, had they knocked out Entei, it didn't really matter because we could have just brought in our Gouging Fire, taken the knockout. Uh, what we would have done is bossed up the Roaring Moon just to knock that out since that's our only like big threat. Uh, and that would have forced them to have to do another Vitality and a Energy from Hand Attachment again, um, all over again, and kind of just keep limiting their options. Uh, and we would have been fine. So that's going to be game three, guys. Hope you liked it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to show off Ponyta. I just didn't get any matchups where it was relevant. Um, really, the main matchups that you're looking for are uh, things like Charizard that you just can't get over their high HP total. Uh, and then, like, gimmick uh, decks that you can run into, like Incineroar and things like that. Um, those can be kind of an issue to, to climb the high health total, so that's where Ponyta comes in super, super clutch. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately it didn't really come up. In Lost Box, it can come up because of the awkward, um, like, HP, where it's like you don't want to be using, uh, three energies and two, to hit for 260 for something that's only, like, 70 health. So normally you just use, like, Iron Valiant, move it around, uh, kind of like how you saw before with the Comb Face. But also, Pony Talk can help there because it can, like, bridge the gap uh, when you don't have your switch cards and allow you to just kind of boost up your attacks to hit for 90 damage and kind of take out single prizers a lot easier. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be the game, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And more than anything, uh, just kind of let me know what you think of, the, think of the list as well as any changes you'd make to it. Um, and even more than that, let me know what you want to see on the channel next, what decks you guys are playing uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so I'm much appreciated, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, peace out.